I think I accidentally made the best Photoshop template for merch designers and DTG printing that you're ever going to use, and I'm gonna demonstrate how to use it today. My new template's called the Style Bender, and no, it's not named after the UFC fighter, for all of you wondering. But anyway, it includes three different templates to choose from, and each have their own unique style. So you pretty much place your artwork in the template, save it, and watch your design transform into that specific style. And I've also included an action that removes the background for DTG printing, so you guys don't have to go through all that hassle of removing the background after you've come up with the design. It saves you a ton of time and I think a lot of you are going to love it. And I also included a 15% off coupon code if you guys wanna pick it up today. And I also wanna give a shout out to Aplique for sponsoring this video. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to upload the artwork on any product using Aplique's dashboard and even get the best pricing for your DTG prints. And we're gonna make a more detailed video on that later on. So definitely make sure you subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. So the cool thing about this template is it has fully uh, customizable adjustment layers. So if let's say you wanna add your own artwork to this style one template, let's go ahead and grab my artwork right here. You can actually copy it with the black background. So if you wanted to, you could just press command A on your keyboard, shift command C to copy merged, go back to style one, and then it's going to have in green step one, and that's where you start. So you wanna left click on the actual thumbnail, which is a smart object. And when you left click on that, it's going to open it up in its own document. And as you can see, it says hide before saving. So we're gonna hide that and then place your artwork here. So basically just paste your artwork in place, resize it, about right there looks pretty good. And then when you go to save it, you're gonna see that it will update your um, design automatically with that specific style. Now, sometimes it will come on a little strong, but no worries, we have a way to fix that. So we're gonna start from the top and move our way down. So the first option, you're gonna see textures, so we can hide that for now. And then the second option is going to be a posterized effect. Now you can toggle that on or off depending on your style. I personally think you should leave it on. It just looks really cool in my opinion. And then the halftone pattern, you don't really wanna mess with that because that's kind of the main part of this entire template. So you don't wanna mess with that or else you might mess the template up. And then we have the tonal range and this is where you want to actually make your adjustments, uh, at least the majority of the adjustments. So what we're first gonna do is focus on our saturation level. Now, if you click on this and go to properties, you're going to see that it says hue and saturation. Now, here is where you can actually mess with the saturation of your artwork. So if it's a little too desaturated, you can bump that saturation up, vice versa, you can bring it down if it's coming on a little too strong with the colors. So that's just the saturation, but if you wanna adjust the actual light and dark balance of your image, you wanna go to levels. And this is where we can affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, when you click on levels under properties, you're going to see a default value in the midtone range of 0.50 and then a highlight value of 237. Now, let's say your image is coming on a little too strong, it's a little too contrasty. You can always take the midtones and bump it to the left a little bit, and you're gonna notice that it will bring out more detail. Obviously, mine is optimized for this image already, so I can bring it back down. And same goes for the highlights. If you want, you can always bring the highlights down or bring them up depending on your image. So this is where you make the main adjustments. Now, let's say you make adjustments and your image still kind of looks a little off. There's also an adjustment for that. So what we're going to do is go all the way down to step number one and under step number one, if you toggle that, that layer on, you're going to see a shadow and highlight layer. And this is where you can actually adjust literally the shadows and highlights of your image. So let's say the highlights are coming on way too strong, they're blown out you can go into that setting and fix those. If the shadows are too dark, you can bring them out. So let's click on that real quick. And you're going to see a prompt uh, come up that says shadow and highlights. Now this little prompt or menu, whatever you wanna call it, is where we can make more adjustments. So if I take the shadows up, you're going to see the image gets a lot brighter naturally because we're basically taking the shadows and raising the level up making them brighter. Now be careful messing with the shadows because if you bump them up too much, you're gonna see that the image looks really blown out and sometimes that can look really cool depending on the artwork. But for this uh, specific design, I don't think it looks very good. So I'm gonna bring it back down to about 0.70 maybe. And then the highlights we can bring up and that will basically take the highlight tone and um, lower it. So it makes it less bright and it brings out more detail. But again, that can also be bad because you might actually make your highlights look too flat and you definitely want that tonal range in there. So we can bring it to the left a little bit and that's gonna raise it up a little bit. And to me, this looks way better. So now we have tonal range, 
which uh, gives us natural contrast. And that's kind of what you want in a design. You want natural contrast. And as you can see, it's a really nice look. So I'm gonna press okay. And you don't really wanna mess with anything else, so keep everything else on. Now under grain, you're gonna have three different grain types. You're gonna have large, medium, and small. Now if I turn off large and put medium on, you're gonna see that the grain is much more fine. And then we have small, which is even finer. So if you want a little bit more prominent grain, just keep it on large and that's going to look like this. And I think it looks pretty nice. So I keep it on large. And then um, what else? Color adjustment is basically a color grade. Now, if you don't like the way this color adjustment works, you can honestly just go into the adjustment and just lower the fill a little bit and that will make it come on a little less strong. But you can also just turn it off and then make level adjustments here. And it also looks kind of cool, but it really depends on your preference. All right, so that was style number one. Let's go ahead and try this design out on style number two. And this one is more chalky. So it, it gives your design like literally a chalk look. And I think it looks pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and click on step number one, just like we did before. And let's paste our new artwork in here. And then we can just hide this other one and save. And you're going to obviously see it update automatically for you. And this is a really interesting look. I really like it. And again, we can go into the levels under tonal range and make further adjustments depending on the artwork itself. Maybe something like that looks nice. And then again, we can mess with the saturation. And this actually does do a lot to this particular uh, style. So I'm going to go up a little bit more with it. We can even change the tone of it if we don't like it. I like it like that. And then we can go into the shadows and highlights once again and bump up the shadows, lower the shadows, basically whatever you want. Also mess with the highlights. That looks pretty nice. And there you go. So that's style number two. And um, again, completely different look, but I really like it. Now let's go ahead and try the last style today before I show you guys how to save this and use the action for printing. So let's go ahead and um, click on step number one, paste that in place, raise it up or resize it. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. So same thing as before. We can always go into the tonal range, mess with the levels, or we can go into shadows and highlights and basically mess with the highlights. There we go. I think it looks a little better like that. Press OK. And then we can also go into the grain and choose from different grain types as well. So large looks pretty good in my opinion. And then we can also do small if you guys feel like it. But I really like large. And then there you go. It's done. So three styles to choose from really easy, easily customizable in seconds. When you guys go to the product, there's also a free tutorial there as well. So if you guys want a more in-depth look on it, then you can always check that out. But um, that is Style Bender for you. And now let's check out the action and how we can use it for printing. Let's say you're done with your design and you're ready to print it with DTG printing or direct to film printing. I have an action set up for that. So if you go to window, you're gonna see actions at the very top. You just wanna make sure that's on. I have mine on the sidebar right here. Under actions, you're going to see DTG BG remover for black tea. And this is what you're going to use. And I will be adding a um, version for a white tea as well. But um, this one is for a black tea. Now all you have to do is click on style one, the group, and you're just going to run the action. So you just wanna make sure you're selecting the group. Once you run that action, you're going to see a color range window pop up. And you basically just wanna mess with the fuzziness I would keep it around 25 to 30. So let's go like 28 with it. Keep the range at zero and press OK. And you're going to automatically see it remove the background. Now, so this is done for style one, but let's say we want to do it for style two. The name is different on the group. So when you go to run it, check this out. You're going to see it do the same thing. And it's going to say the object layer style one is not currently available. It's completely fine. Just continue running it and it's still going to work as you can see. So it's the same thing. Now each concept might need a different level of fuzziness. So let me go back and show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and run it one more time. So if your design is lacking detail in the shadows, you can always take the fuzziness to the left a little bit, like around 16, 15, 16, press okay, and then press continue, continue. And you'll see that we have a little bit more detail now in the shadows. So, or, or should I say more information in the shadows? So you just want to kind of mess with the fuzziness and keep the range uh, where it's at and you're good to go. Just like before, if we turn the background off, you can see that it has removed pretty much all the black while keeping the detail of the white, which is beautiful. Let's say we want to save style one and upload it to a plate for DTG printing or DTF printing. What we need to do is press command or control A and then shift command or control C to copy. Let's go file new. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, fit our canvas around our design perfectly. So let's uh, click create 
and then shift command or control V to paste that in place. All you want to do is uh, select the entire artboard and center it. Now turn off the background or delete it. The problem is if you go to save this right now, a plate has a 20 megabyte um, file size limit. So what happens is when you go to upload it, it's not going to work. So what I do is I save two different versions for a plate specifically. So what you need to do is you need to go file, export, and then export as, and we're going to do a little bit of adjusting to make the file size a little smaller. So the first thing we wanna do is take the scale to like 95, and then on the left hand side, we're going to see the megabytes update. So we can even try 80. All right, so 65 worked. You can probably get away with like 69 or 68 or something like that. But the problem is we're making the artwork smaller, right? And that's not really a good thing. You don't really want to do that. So you can do this or you can use a compressor, which I'm about to show you how to do. So what we're going to do first, though, is I'm going to make this even smaller. And this is going to be our display um, artwork. And you'll see what I'm saying in a second. So let's make this 25% maybe 40% or 35%. There we go, six megabytes, which is perfect for displaying it on the mockup on a Plex uh, dashboard. So let's go ahead and click export, and then we can name this wizard for display. So that's our first document down. Now we're just gonna go export, quick export as PNG, and we're gonna name this wizard print before compressor. So this is going to be our higher quality format right here. And um, the first one's going to be just to upload to a plate to display it on the mockup. And then the second one is going to be where we link the high resolution artwork, okay? There's so many websites out there that are free, but this one is called imagecompressor.com. I'm just going to upload my file that we just saved, which is uh, wizard print before compressor. We're gonna select that. And then it's going to automatically compress it for us. So you just wanna let it do its thing and then save it. And that is the file that you're going to link um, and I'm gonna show you exactly where to link it right now. If you are a Shopify user like me, you need to sign into your dashboard and then head over to apps, and then you're gonna click uh, apps and sales channels, okay? And then you should see all the apps that you have installed. We can also click on Shopify app store, and then when you go to the Shopify app store, you can just click um, on the top search bar and type in a pleak, and you wanna find the app and make sure you have the latest version, and then you're gonna open the app, okay? And once you open it, it's gonna go to this uh, page right here and you need to set it up follow the prompts to set it up but i already have mine all set up now if i want to set up a test print all i have to do is find a product that i want to print on so let's go ahead and go to products men's and let's just find a t-shirt that we can print on real quick and i'm going to go back to my online image compressor and download this real quick because it is finished before choosing a blank keep in mind that they're going to change brand to brand okay not all brands charge the same some are more premium than others for example if you're printing on a comfort colors it's going to cost more than a gildan 5000 so you just need to keep that in mind so what i'm going to do is choose gildan which is a soft style t-shirt 64000 let's go ahead and click design t-shirts and then it's gonna bring up this page right here. Now, we already saved two different files. So what I wanna do is click add your artwork and then I'm just going to choose the display version and it's going to upload and it's only six megabytes. So it's perfect for this. And this is going to be our display. And now you can click, let's see it on garment and it's going to automatically upload it to the actual mockup and you can then position it where you want it, resize it, all that good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and make it as big as we can and just center it and let's choose a darker fabric. There we go, so that's pretty much all you have to do right there. Once you add your artwork to the mockup and position it and resize it how you want, you wanna head down to where it says digital print and this is actually the artwork file that you just uploaded, but there's a problem with the artwork file we just uploaded. It's only six megabytes, it's really small, it's not good for printing. So what we need to do is click this little paper clip icon and we're going to upload the new file that we just downloaded from the image compressor website. So I'm gonna to go to downloads, click on it, and you're gonna see continue uploading, you're gonna click yes, and you're gonna see it load to 100%, and that's how you know it worked, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna check for the file size, the name of it, that it actually is linked properly, okay? So we're gonna let this load, and then once it's at 100%, we should see it at the bottom. And there you go, wizard print before, this is the actual artwork that we just uploaded to the image compressor website. So let's say we wanna order a sample now and not pay a premium price, right? We wanna save some money. All you have to do is click next and then you wanna click drop ship this product, okay? You don't wanna click buy a sample. I think the price should be accurate right there, that's just my opinion. But for some reason they have it under drop ship this product. Instead of messing with this section, you just wanna click add to cart and choose the size that you want. I'm gonna choose XL and then we're gonna click add to cart again. 
and at this point you're going to check out like normal and you have the best possible price guys simple all right and that's all you have to do to get the best price so check out like normal put your information order it and it will get shipped to your door and you can test it out and see if you like the product or not um, the link is in the description below if you guys want to pick up my style bender template for Adobe Photoshop and if you guys want to sign up to a pleek and I definitely recommend trying it out. My name is Charlie Pangus. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.